Today I want to talk about whether democracy can survive in the era of social media. The concept of democracy, where power rests with the people and their elected representatives, has long been seen as the pinnacle of political achievement in the West. The Athenian model of direct democracy, though flawed and limited to a small segment of the population, inspired many modern political systems. However, as Socrates warned, the unexamined life is not worth living, implying that democracy could falter if citizens did not engage in rigorous self-reflection and education. And this concern is echoed today, as the sheer volume of information and misinformation on social media threatens the very deliberation that democracy depends on. This digital revolution has transformed how citizens engage with politics, news, and each other, raising critical question. Can democracy, in its traditional sense, survive in an age where social media dictates much of the public dialogue? In ancient Athens, democracy was a highly participatory process. Citizens, albeit only free men, were expected to actively engage in political debates, participate in the assembly, and cast votes directly on laws and decisions. The system thrived on public discourse, rhetoric, and deliberation, where the marketplace, the agora, was the centre of civic life. Whilst it was not free from manipulation, democratic debate was based on face-to-face -face interactions and decisions were ideally made after public deliberation. Over time, as modern democracies formed, the scale and complexity of governance required a representative system where elected officials acted on behalf of the people. Communication between government and populace remained relatively direct through town halls, printed newspapers and public speeches. There was, however, an implicit expectation that democratic discourse was informed, rational, and rooted in shared facts. As Winston Churchill famously remarked, democracy is the worst form of government except for all those other forms that have been tried from time to time. And this acknowledgement highlights that while democracy has its shortcomings, it remains the best system for representing the people's will, flaws and all. However, in today's digital age, these flaws are magnified by the rise of social media where misinformation and division have become new obstacles. Entering into the era of social media, a platform where anyone with an internet connection can broadcast their thoughts to potentially millions of people. On the surface, social media should be a boon for democracy. It increases access to information, allowing people to engage with political ideas, political leaders, spread ideas, and organize movements in real time. Indeed, we have seen social media's role in driving political change from the Arab Spring to various social justice movements in the West. However, this unprecedented connectivity has also brought significant challenges. Social media algorithms prioritize content that evokes emotional reactions, particularly outrage, over content that encourages thoughtful reflection or debate. This creates echo chambers, where people are exposed to ideas that reinforce their existing beliefs and are insulated from opposing views. Worse, misinformation spreads rapidly, often outpacing efforts to correct it. And the result is a fragmented public discourse where competing versions of reality exist simultaneously and meaningful dialogue becomes increasingly difficult, if not impossible. At the heart of democratic governance lies the concept of rational discourse. The idea that citizens and leaders engage in reasoned debate based on shared facts. But social media has shifted the emphasis from deliberation to instantaneous reactions. 
complex political issues are reduced to 280 character tweets, clickbait headlines, or viral memes, stripping away nuance and oversimplifying discussions. This rapid pace of communication discourages the careful consideration of policy that democracy requires. Instead, it promotes a culture of quick, emotionally charged responses. Indeed, former US President Barack Obama once said, democracy requires compromise, even when you are 100% right. Social media, however, encourages the opposite, entrenched positions and emotional outbursts that leave little room for the kind of compromise and thoughtful debate that democracy relies upon. Additionally, the anonymity and detachment of online platforms often foster hostility, as people feel emboldened to say things that they would never voice in a face-to-face -face conversation. Civil discourse, once a hallmark of democratic societies, is being replaced by a more adversarial, even tribal form of engagement. Political opponents are no longer seen as individuals with different ideas, but as enemies to be attacked or cancelled. This polarization fractures the public into ideological camps, further eroding the sense of a shared democratic project. In addition to these cultural shifts, social media has also made it easier for both domestic and foreign actors to manipulate public opinion. Political operatives, lobbyists, and even for foreign governments use sophisticated tools to spread disinformation, fuel division, and sway elections. As George Orwell famously wrote, in a time of deceit, telling the truth is a revolutionary act. Social media, with its capacity to spread both truth and lies at lightning speed, has made it more difficult than ever to discern fact from fiction. Orwell's insight reminds us that in today's political landscape, maintaining the integrity of facts is an essential, if increasingly elusive, component of democracy. And Orwell's fears are brought to reality by fake accounts, bots, and deepfakes, that blur the line between truth and falsehood, making it increasingly difficult for the average person to discern what is real. Indeed, the interference of Russian bots during the 2016 US presidential election is perhaps the most prominent example of how easily democracy can be undermined through digital platforms. Even in cases where no malicious intent is involved, the sheer volume of content circulating online can lead to a phenomenon known as information overload. With so much news, opinion, and analysis available, people may feel overwhelmed and either disengage from politics altogether, or rely on simplified narratives. And this makes them vulnerable to charismatic leaders who exploit fear, uncertainty, and misinformation for their own gain. Ironically, while social media allows more people to participate in political discourse than ever before, it may also be weakening the quality of that participation. In ancient Athens, democratic participation, as I mentioned, required physical presence, time and investment in understanding the issues at hand. Today, however, the barriers to entry are much lower. All one needs is a social media account and an opinion. Whilst this expanded participation is, in and of itself, a democratic ideal, at least theoretically, it can lead to superficial engagement in practice. Many people consume political content passively, scrolling through headlines or reacting to viral posts without delving deeper into the issues. And this has led to the rise of slacktivism, where people feel they are contributing to a cause simply by liking or sharing a post, without taking any meaningful action beyond that. Despite these challenges, it is not all doom and gloom. Social media also has the potential to be a force for democratic renewal, provided that we can find ways to address its pitfalls. And there are two quotes that address this concern well. Firstly, John Stuart Mill argued that, the particular evil of silencing the expression of opinion is that it robs the human race. Such that 
social media, with its potential for enabling public discourse, should be a platform for the expression of diverse ideas. Yet Mill's insight is especially relevant today as we wrestle with the tension between free speech and the spread of harmful or false information online. The second quote is from former British Prime Minister Boris Johnson, who has noted, It is absolutely vital for our democracy that we have a free press, without fear or favour. And in the digital age, this sentiment extends beyond the press to social media platforms, where the potential for renewal exists, but only if they foster informed, fearless dialogue, rather than fear-mongering and division. So how do we address these potential pitfalls? Perhaps initiatives to promote digital literacy? Teaching people how to critically assess information and distinguish between credible and unreliable sources? That could really help with the spread of misinformation. More radically, and but more likely achievable, reforms to the platforms themselves, such as more transparent algorithms, fact-checking tools, and a greater emphasis on long-form content and thoughtful debate. This could encourage more substantive discussions. Indeed, some platforms like Reddit or here on YouTube have communities where high-quality discourse can still thrive, suggesting that the problem is not inherent to social media, but rather how it is currently being used. And in addition, there is always the potential for social media to re-engage disenfranchised or disillusioned groups, giving voice to those who feel excluded from traditional political systems. And if harnessed effectively, this could lead to a more vibrant and inclusive democracy. Ultimately, the survival of democracy in the social media era will depend on our ability to strike a balance between digital innovation and the preservation of rational, informed discourse. Democracy has always been a fragile system, requiring not just participation, but thoughtful, deliberate engagement. While social media has the potential to enhance democratic participation, it also carries the risk of eroding the very foundations of democratic decision-making. As we navigate this new terrain, we must remember the lessons of history. Democracies succeed not when citizens react to every provocation, but when they take the time to reflect, deliberate, and engage with each other in good faith. Whether social media will become a tool for democratic decay or renewal depends on how we choose to use it, and whether we can reclaim the spirit of rational discourse that democracy demands, and indeed requires. As Socrates wisely said, I know that I am intelligent, because I know that I know nothing. This humility, the willingness to question our assumptions and seek truth, is perhaps the most valuable lesson democracy can take from ancient philosophy. It is a lesson we must remember if democracy is to survive the social media era. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe for more content on history, philosophy, and the modern world.